What is up YouTube? We are back with another awesome moto vlog. And before we get into today's video, it is November and it is time for another awesome moto t-shirt giveaway. I've been giving away t-shirts just like this for a few months now. And additionally, with those t-shirt giveaways, we'll also be giving away a bunch of awesome moto stickers for the monthly winner. All right, so without further ado, let's see who the winner is. Congratulations and thank you for being an Awesome Moto subscriber. I appreciate all of your support and here is a t-shirt and some stickers as a token of my appreciation. I'll be hitting you up via Instagram or email so keep an eye out for a message from me and I'll be contacting you to figure out shipping addresses and t-shirt sizes. If this is your first Awesome Moto video, welcome. I do GX470 videos along with M4 and FZ07 content. If this content has any interest to you, hit that subscribe button down below. Not only does it let you know when I upload new videos, but it gets you entered into the monthly t-shirt and sticker giveaways. All right, so let's jump into today's vlog. In the last video, we did a diff breather relocation. That was a great modification. We now have protection against water getting into our differential. So the last modification that I've talked about in the last few vlogs to make sure that we're prepared for these Florida swampy climates is a snorkel. So not only are we doing a snorkel, but we'll also be doing an aftermarket K&N air filter upgrade. So this will be nice. We'll get some better breathing for the engine. And additionally, to top it all off, figuratively and literally, we're going to be adding a pre-cleaner to the GX. So instead of having that front facing snorkel top, we will have this pre-cleaner. And what this will do is it'll allow rain to kind of hit and fall off to the sides. We won't get rain coming into the front and this will suck air up through the bottom. So I've heard a lot of issues from people that have the front facing snorkel intakes where not only do they get rainwater in when they're driving on highway conditions when it's raining heavily and it's in the front facing direction. I don't think rainwater getting in there is such a major issue because it has a long way to travel before it goes up into the intake and the intake actually pulls from the top of the air box. I don't really think there's a major issue with the front facing intake. Uh, more or less for me, I'm interested in the pre-cleaner just because I hear a lot of people actually having issues with people throwing garbage and just like vandalizing their cars. They'll have their vehicle parked in a parking lot and people will throw gum wrappers inside of their snorkels or rocks. And so I hear a lot of issues with that. So to prevent that, I really wanted to add one of these pre-cleaners. All right, so a lot of people are probably curious about what snorkel I went with. I actually went with the eBay or Amazon snorkel because one, I've talked to a lot of people who have installed the Iron Man 4x4 and the Dobinson snorkel and they're double, almost triple the price of an eBay snorkel and I hear they're just as much of a pain to install. So I went ahead and listened to a lot of people's advice in saying that going with the eBay snorkel is actually probably a better thing to do and also additionally, you know, we're going to upgrade it with this pre-cleaner. So I think this will be a cool place to start. If the eBay one just absolutely sucks and I don't like it, I'll tell you the honest truth and we'll go ahead and we'll replace it with the Dobinson one or the Iron Man 4x4. So, all right, so inside of the box, got some hardware. Uh, a lot of people complain about the templates for these. They say they don't fit right. So I'm here to try to figure out what the big issue is and why the template is so off. Honestly, I think one thing you could do to make sure that this is gonna work properly is put the template on the snorkel and if the holes don't line up to where the holes are on the snorkel you've already got an issue and you don't want to use this template as is you just want to modify it so i think a big way to prevent some of the issues people are having is to just double check your template make sure it fits the snorkel and actually lines up with the holes if it doesn't modify it and you should be good to go so here we have some rubber couplers some hose fittings and there's also a bracket in here for mounting to the upper uh, a pillar of the vehicle all right, so the next thing in the box is the front facing inlet for the top of the snorkel. Uh, we will not be using this. We're gonna be replacing it with that pre-cleaner. This is the main portion of the snorkel. This will mount to the side of the vehicle and extend up the A pillar here. And uh, this is actually where these mounting holes are. All right, and then the last piece that comes in the kit, this is the connecting piece that'll connect our snorkel to the factory air box. And this will sit inside of the fender. So this kit comes with some hardware. There's some rivets in here, which I'm not gonna use. We got some rubber couplers. This is gonna couple from our air box to our snorkel. And then we got some hardware for mounting up to our bracket. And also there are these threaded pins that these go down inside of the base of our snorkel here. So we'll work with that. So one of the most important tools you need for this job is a hole cutter. And this mounts to your drill. And what it has is a drill bit in the center. 
and then it has this ridged edge and this will allow us to cut a hole through the fender. So the directions actually call for a four inch hole cutter. I went with a four and a quarter inch one. I decided if we're ever gonna be cutting a giant hole in the side of the vehicle, we might as well go a quarter inch bigger and it'll give us a little bit of extra play. All right, so let's check out this K&N filter. Wow, it's actually super low profile. The nice thing about K&N filters is you can buy their cleaning and lubricating spray, which I already have for my motorcycle and the M4. So I'm always spraying these down and cleaning them whenever I go through and detail the car. You know, this should last quite a long time. They have a lifetime warranty and it's made in the US. So pretty awesome product there, love K&N. All right, so let's just get into it. I'm really curious to see how this template actually fits up to the snorkel. Like I said, I hear a lot of people have issues with their templates and they say that they don't fit properly and they're going through and having to ream out holes and make them bigger. And I think, you know, a lot of that could probably be fixed if you were to just check your template before going through and actually mounting anything up. So I'm just going to go ahead and kind of line up these holes. All right. So I'm not quite sure how well you can see this, but I lined up the template here. And to me, it looks like the holes line up very well. And I don't see any issues here with getting the holes to line up and also where the drilling location is. So let's just go ahead and, and leave this unmodified because it looks like it's good. And we'll drill using the template and we'll see where it gets us. All right, so first things first, what we're gonna wanna do is take out the factory air box. And we're also gonna wanna get up under here and take out the fender liner so we can get access to be able to put the piping up there that routes from the hole cut into the engine compartment. All right, so as you can see, there's quite a bit of dirt up inside of the engine here from all the off-roading we've been doing lately. But to get to the air box, you know, you first want to do is take off this connector on top. This is for the mass airflow sensor. Uh, take that off, pretty straightforward. And then these two hinges here, and there should be one, actually there's two around the back. And then you can kind of get up inside of there. And first I'm going to pull the factory air filter out of there. Set that off to the side, we'll be getting rid of that so we won't need to keep it. Alrighty, so I was able to pull that off. So I want to take the camera off and kind of show everybody here. This is mud residue all inside the bottom of the air box. This is from having water and mud inside of the air box. So I was very much in need of a snorkel. So a lot of the trails that we've been riding on have been causing quite a bit of exposure to mud and water on these trails. So one of the reasons why we're having water and mud come up in the vehicle is because this Goliath off-road bumper is awesome. But you know, one of the things that I did was I went and I cut this fender liner. And unfortunately, right up in there is where the factory air intake is. I know that a lot of people say there's not really a whole lot of need to have a snorkel in most places, but I think Florida is one of those caveats because there's a lot of deep water trails. It's just really hard to avoid water here, especially when there's a lot of rain in the summertime. So uh, snorkel was definitely necessary. All right, so while we're in here, you wanna just hit these bolts. These are 12 millimeters and we'll pull out this lower portion of the air box and pull it out from the side of the fender here. All right, with the lower portion of the air box removed, we can go ahead and pull off this coupler here. So I'll keep this lower portion out for now so that we'll have access to get in here to route all the fittings. All right, so we're not far into the install and I'm already running into my first issue. The main issue is this light pod bracket and the fact that it's just protruding out and it is now causing issues with the way this mounts up against the vehicle. All right, so first things first, you wanna go ahead and put down a layer of painter's tape and that'll give us a nice surface to drill through. All right, so as much of a bummer as it was, I ended up taking out this bracket that was in here for holding the ditch light. Um, gonna have to look for an alternative for that because I can just tell just from putting the template up to the car and holding the snorkel up here, I can just tell that it's gonna interfere with it. So I took this off. All right, so the next thing we wanna do is line up our template. So you wanna go over here to the edge of the door seam where that fender line is, and then also align the top here to the edge of the fender. And once you have that in place, just kind of painters tape everything down. All right, so with the template in place, you wanna go through with a center punch and mark each hole, and then we'll pull off the template and we'll start cutting. All right, so after marking each hole with a center punch, go through and hit them with a Sharpie so that you can see them once you take the template off. All right, so with your four and a quarter inch hole bit, go ahead and drill out this first hole. Alrighty. Well, there's no turning back now. 
All right, so I'm going through and I'm just test fitting this hole and lining up to see if my other drill holes are gonna be the correct position. And the one nice thing about going four and a quarter on here is it gives you some up and down play here so that you can go ahead and align these. You got plenty of wiggle room. If this was tight around here, then you would have a lot of issues trying to get things lined up. So it looks very good to me, but I think what we should do is there's little studs that go in here. We need to put some Loctite, put those studs in. So we're gonna go ahead and just start drilling these holes. All right, so now that we have all these holes started with a small bit, I'm gonna go through with an 1132nd bit. This 1132nd bit is just a little bit wider than the studs that need to go through here. So that gives us a little bit of wiggle room just in case things are not exactly lined up. We'll have some play there to adjust things. Wow. All right, so there it is. Everything lines up perfect first time. I think the key was going four and a quarter inch on this bigger hole because all of these studs are mounted into place and I can feel that they are all seated into their holes. So that's awesome. Go ahead with the four and a quarter inch on the big hole and a little bit bigger at 11 30 seconds on the other holes and you should be good. All right, so the next thing you want to do is protect any of this exposed metal here because it will rust. So you want to hit that with some clear coat. You can either go through and hit it with a brush or go through and spray into those holes. All right, so the next thing you want to do is remove the fender liner. This will give you access to put your hands up in here and connect the piece that connects from the snorkel over to the air box. So we'll just go through here. There's some T25, it seems like, uh, bolts that hold things into place. All right, so with the fender liner removed, we have access now. We can reach up here, you can see totally great access and then we can get in here and reach up and thread all of these bolts on to uh, mount the snorkel there too all right so i noticed my buddy robert had to cut about a half inch off of this side the the fatter side just so that it wouldn't protrude from the vehicle so much because this thing sticks out pretty far uh, once i got that in there i realized hey that's not looking right so i'm just going to use a saw here and just start going away at that All right, so I had to take a break from filming the other night. I was getting bit up by mosquitoes. And I keep forgetting about how early it gets dark. So additionally, we had Hurricane Nicole hit us this week on the east coast of Florida. I'm a few houses off of the beach here, so we had tons of beach erosion. Uh, so I was unable to film then. So I'm back. So as I was cutting this piece, I screwed up big time and I think I've salvaged my situation, but hopefully I can save you from making the same mistake that I did. Uh, in particular, this piece up here where you have this divot, this goes towards the back of the vehicle actually uh, i had that backwards i thought it went to the front i guess because i thought it was narrower it made more sense to go to the most narrow part of the fender here but i uh, had it backwards so my dumb self cut some extra material off of this portion instead of over here and because of that now i have an issue where i additionally cut the coupler on this side as well and this is not where i wanted to cut i meant to cut over here. I went over to Lowe's into the plumbing section and I found this three inch to 76 millimeter coupler. This actually works perfect. I cut a little bit off the bottom. This will give us enough space to fit on this end here. And actually the 76 millimeter fits perfectly over the air box and tightens up very well. So I did a little test fit of that. So today I'm gonna go ahead and finish the install. We'll put this piece up inside apply the couplers, mount up everything. All right, so after jacking up the vehicle, I notice I get a ton of extra travel here on the suspension. So I actually don't even need to take off this front wheel to get a lot of access in here. So I'm not even gonna bother. I'm just gonna leave this in place and work up in here. I've got plenty of room. So that should be good enough to get things routed. I threw a jack stand under there and have the jack in place under it just for safety. So let's go ahead and start routing this through. All right, so before we uh, bolt up the airbox here, I wanna get some of this mud residue that was in here from off-roading, get that out of here, get it cleaned up. All righty, now we can put our brand new K&N filter in here. This thing is nice. I love the way this fits. And lastly, 
put our top cover on here. Definitely a little bit tighter of a fit there on the air box, but overall, not that bad. Hook up our airflow sensor, and then make sure you tighten down the coupler to the engine. And for the heck of it while we're in here, let's just hit everything with some cleaner and make this look better. Let that soak a little bit. <clears throat> All right, so with the kit, come with these big uh, fender washers. And we also have these uh, nuts right here. So I'm gonna attach those to all of these points and tighten everything down. All right, so we got everything tightened up. I just wanna show up under the wheel well so you can see kind of how everything's laid out. So this is the front going into the air box. And then here is the coupler and hose clamps for the snorkel. All right, so from here, we just wanna address the top and also this mounting location here, which we're gonna use some double-sided Gorilla Tape and see how that holds up. All right, so now with the engine running, uh, the one thing you wanna check real quick, since we won't be able to do this with the pre-cleaner, is put your hand over here. Uh, the pre-cleaner, it's gonna suck in from around all sides, so we won't be able to easily cover the top, so just put your hand under here and you should feel some suction, and you can actually hear it. So we're all good there. All right, so for the pre-cleaner mounting, I actually had some spare rubber from the coupler that I screwed up while cutting and trying to mount for the air box. So when I bought the coupler that adapted and tapered to the, from the three inch to the 76 millimeter to go to the air box, that actually freed up a coupler for me. So this was the coupler that originally went to the air box. This will kind of go up on the top here like this. And there's an indicator on the top, which shows you which way is the front. So put this towards the front up here, and then we'll just hose clamp this on just like we did everywhere else. All right, so we got the pre-cleaner mounted up. This looks awesome, much cheaper than the $200 one that I see a lot of people using. So I'm gonna rock that for a little while. Uh, maybe I switch over and kind of swap these two out and see how I feel, but for now, I'm really digging the way the pre-cleaner looks. I think it just looks nicer. And we'll also have the ability to suck air in from 360 degrees around from the bottom. And we don't have to worry about rainwater going in or people being able to put stuff down inside of your snorkel tubes. All right, so as you can see, we've got three holes here on the back side of the snorkel. And you also have three Phillips head bolts that come with. And so really, those just kind of go in like this, up against the side. So I was originally gonna build a custom bracket so that I get more surface area, but I think there's enough surface area here to put the double-sided Gorilla Tape on. So I'll put a layer of that down and we'll put these bolts in to the snorkel, peel that layer off and we'll stick it onto the vehicle and we'll see how well that holds up. All right, so once the surface is clean, then we'll just peel off the backer on this tape and we'll push it tight against the vehicle. All right, so you wanna apply it to the side of the vehicle here, and you wanna hold it in place for about a minute if you can. All right, so that's holding on there really good. So what I did is once I put this adhesive on here, I went through and I loosened all these bolts, and that gave a little bit more play and took some of the tension off of here and allowed things to sit really nice and flush. And so I think this is gonna hold up really well. Like I said, I've had rear diffusers, front lips, and trunk lips all installed with this and they've held up for several years under pretty high speed conditions. So I think this will hold up just fine. And it also prevents us from having scratches on the vehicle from magnets. And we don't have to worry about any riveting or drilling into the A-pillars. So I think this is a pretty clean solution. All right, so as cool as this thing looks sitting still, the real test is to see how well this thing does in water. Previously, we we're getting water into the air box through the wheel wells. We shouldn't have that issue anymore. So let's go find some water to go play in and see how this thing performs.
All right, so there we have it. The snorkel install is complete and we've come back out to the area where Max and I were a couple of vlogs ago where now we have a snorkel and our rear diff breather. And you can see we went through a lot of the puddles we avoided last time. We do not have any water in our air box, so that is great. Snorkel is working as expected. I'm a big fan of this topper on here. The pre-cleaner is working really well. And so additionally, as we go through some of these puddles, I notice water hits up in this area quite a bit. I can see there's water all over the top here. Uh, the nice thing is, is it has this little reservoir here, which is filled with water and some mud right now, actually. And the nice thing is, is that probably would have went inside if we had the other snorkel top on there. So it's really nice to see benefits of having the pre-cleaner on here already. So things I would have done differently for this install that you can benefit from, make sure you cut the right side of the piece that goes through the fender. Obviously I screwed that up, but it was able to salvage my position where I was at and we got things working, but it made the install a lot longer than it needed to be. All in total, I probably spent about five hours on this with filming. So I'd say if you're doing this yourself and you're following all these tips, you could probably get it done in about three hours, maybe two if you're quick. Other things that I would have done differently is the bracket here where I put the Gorilla Tape on. The Gorilla Tape is actually holding up really well, but the problem for me is, is the angle of the bracket doesn't meet exactly with the pillar. So what I wanna do is just kind of take that and bend it a little bit to get better surface contact. Right now it's about 50% of it's touching and 50% is just hanging in air. So the surprising thing is, is even though 50% of this is touching, it still held up at like 75 miles an hour on 95 today. And lastly, these ditch light brackets, they do not fit. Unfortunately, they come in contact with a snorkel here. I've actually already ordered the Rago Fab brackets, which are a lot more low profile and they keep the pod lights in just a little bit further and they don't interfere with the snorkel. Since I no longer need these brackets, I'm actually gonna give these brackets away to one of you lucky subscribers. So in the next 30 days in December sometime, I'm gonna do a drawing. So if you like GX470 content and you wanna get entered to win these ditch light brackets, hit that subscribe button down below. Not only does it get you entered in to win these ditch light brackets, but it gets you notified every time I upload new videos and for our monthly t-shirt giveaway. Speaking of subscribers, I wanna thank all of you current subscribers. We just hit our 3K mark the other day and I wanna thank each and every one of you personally. I appreciate all of your support watching these videos and subscribing. And it's nice to be building a community of GX followers who are interested in this type of content. Additionally, this week on November 23rd, I'm gonna be doing a special live stream. And we're gonna just browse the internet together and we're gonna go look for all the best Black Friday, Cyber Monday, GX470 deals that are out there. So keep an eye out on my Instagram, at Awesomemoto, and also on my channel. I'll be putting out more details about the exact timing of that, but we're gonna all hang out together and look at some Black Friday deals and save everybody a bunch of money. All right, well, I'm gonna end things here. I had a blast out here off-roading today and I hope you enjoyed that as well. Thank you all so much for watching and we'll see you on the next one.